I'm Ashley Gudgeon, I'm the osteopath here at Absolute Health and Performance. I'm going to talk about sleep and its importance for um, health and productivity and, and the way that we feel um, and give some simple ways that people can help improve their sleep. So sleep is the most fundamental thing that we do on a daily basis. It, uh, and, and we know that only 10 to 15% of sleep issues are from a true disorder such as narcolepsy. And that really highlights that most sleep issues are lifestyle and behavioral issues. So basically uh, we go through sleep cycles at night time and, and they, go, they have five different stages. Uh, so that's um, separated into non-rapid eye movement stages and a, a rapid eye movement stage. So that goes from, so we start in non-rapid eye movement stage one, which is our lightest stage of sleep, and it only lasts roughly one to 10 minutes. And this might be known as if you're sitting on the couch watching Netflix or, or the television and you quickly doze off and you wake straight back up and you, you might not even be aware that you're falling asleep, but this is that non-rapid eye movement stage one, it's that lightest stage of sleep. Then we move into non-rapid eye movement stage two. And basically this is where we start to, uh, our body starts to prepare for our deep stages of sleep. Uh, all of our vital signs change, our body temperature decreases, our heart rate decreases, our respiratory rate decreases, uh, and we um, start to change from one nervous system to another nervous system, which is our parasympathetic nervous system. And then um, our next stage is non-rapid eye movement, stage three and four, and these two are lumped together because these are our deepest stage of sleep, and a lot of um, important bodily um, functions occur at this stage so we get um, memory consolidation so we take short-term memory and we forge long-term connections in this stage um, and we also get uh, release of um, growth hormone which helps with tissue repair and a whole heap of other things as well and then that final stage is rapid eye movement and that is um, really interesting because we have little to no muscle activation in that stage but our eyes dart back and forth in our head uh, and it's really interesting because this is the stage Stage in which dreams occur. So if we have somebody who, who doesn't dream or they can never remember the dream, it might be that they're not spending uh, that time in the um, REM stage of their sleep. So if we're looking at the importance of, of the different stages, uh, the, the deeper stages, stage three and four non-rapid eye movement and REM are the most important stages that uh, do occur. So typically we'd go through those cycles uh, and depending on how long you sleep at night time, you might go through four, five, six different um, cycles per night uh, and typically a cycle will last 90 to 120 minutes. So we know that uh, mental health and sleep are, are interrelated so it's a, a two-way street so initially we thought that um, that poor sleep was just a, um, a factor from suffering from a mental health condition such as um, uh, depression or anxiety but we now know that uh, poor sleep or sleep deprivation can actually lead to mental health issues as well and not so much the causing factor of but it can be a contributing factor uh, so there was a recent study that was um, completed uh, last year in 2018 taking 18 healthy adults uh, and they were separated into two groups and the two groups were a sleep deprivation group of 24 hours and then just a normal sleep group so they would sleep their normal eight hours per night or so on. Um, and from that study, uh, we found out that the sleep deprivation group had a 30% increase in anxiety um, feelings compared to the, the non-sleep group. And they also had changes in brain activation in certain um, aspects of the brain on a functional MRI compared to the, the um, well-slept group. Okay, so sleep plays a, a really important role in weight control and that's via the hormone um, regulation of leptin and ghrelin. So leptin is our society hormone. It helps us tell our brain when we're full uh, and when we're underslept this is played down and um, ghrelin is our hunger hormone so it, and this is really played up when we're underslept. So, and on average, um, a research paper showed that somebody who sleeps under six hours a night typically consumes 300 more calories in that day compared to somebody who has slept well. There is a whole heap of um, sleep hygiene tips that one can follow to try and help their sleep. Uh, the, probably the most important one is environment. So with, um, this is separated typically into three um, categories. We've got noise, uh, light and temperature. So 
noise wise we want to have a um, quiet as room as possible uh, and if you're in an environment where you can't control the noise then using some earplugs can be a simple way to try and help that if when we're talking about light we want as dark as room as possible as well and if you've got any light sources in your room that again that you can't control then using an eye mask can be really helpful and finally temperature and it's been shown that we sleep better in a cooler room than a environment so typically 16 to 18 degrees um, Celsius is the best temperature for sleep and that's typically because when we go to bed our um, core temperature drops and we want to replicate this but if we're um, in a really warm environment and our core temperature isn't able to drop then we find it really hard to fall asleep or get good quality sleep. Bedtime routine is really important. So basically this is anything um, that you find relaxing or non-stimulating that you do before you go to bed every single night. And that helps your body understand that it's time to relax, um, unwind and get ready for bed. And it typically helps people fall asleep a little bit easier. Uh, some examples that you might want to try are having a warm shower, um, reading a book, uh, meditating, mindfulness, anything that you find relaxing uh, can be used as your bedtime routine and that can be anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes before bed just to help you unwind um, but doing that long term really helps with your ability to fall asleep and, and get good quality sleep. In summary, uh, sleep is a really important process that we go through every single night uh, and people need to make it a priority and it, be, because it has such important implications on our health and well-being uh, and there are some really simple things that people can do um, such as sleep hygiene tips that, that they can work on that can help um, improve their ability to fall asleep but also get better quality sleep.